and we are back again to play some more Butterfly Soup 2. Excited to continue. It takes forever for me to come back to games, but I eventually do come back to them. So let's do it. Oh yeah, we left off here. We were men. So we looked at all this already last time. What the heck else are we supposed to look at? Oh, what I do? Ooh, not me pressing the wrong button. Hold on. Let me get situated. Okay. So we looked at all this stuff. I keep pressing the wrong button, y'all. I guess we gotta look at everything again. There's just sand here, no rocks. We looked at this already. It's a dead husk of a tree stump. Right. We don't even have enough rocks to throw at this yet. Oh yeah, we're supposed to be getting rocks. D and I need one, otherwise it's not fair. Okay, and we already paid this dog. Can we go anywhere else? Damn. Men scours the ground for rocks. Meanwhile, Dia watches the dog running around. If I were in charge of naming that dog, I'd name him Banana Dipped in Chocolate. What? That's way too long. His first name can be Banana. Middle name Dipped in, last name Chocolate. <laughs> That's still the exact same length. Right. There's a decently big slab lying in the dirt. Oh, okay. What's a slab? Is that a rock? We both have rocks now. Let's go throw them at the tree stump. Okay. All right, guess we're going now. Um, wait, what is this? Let me look at the picnic table right quick. Esther's playing with the camcorder settings. Oh, hey Esther. Yeah! Minerals a rock at the dead stump. It hits it with a thwack, causing a small piece of dry bark to fly off. Cool. Yeah, she's so impressed by me. I bet she wants to kiss me so bad. Dia follows Min's lead and fires a rock at the stump. It slams into the stump so hard, its top half explodes into a shower of bark shards. Whoa, that was so badass. Thanks. She's the most perfect girl in the world. Min has to hold herself back from grabbing Dia and kissing her senseless. I wish we didn't have to hide that we're dating. I get why we have to, but I wish I could just shout it from the mountaintops that you're my girlfriend. It's still true, even if you can't say it. But it'd be nice to say it so everyone knows. Yeah, I know what you mean. I wish we could go on more dates. I wanna go everywhere with you. Aw, the aquarium, PetSmart, Home Depot, light section, airplane, me, she's so me. Airplane, why? Do you like flying? Uh-oh, not me, not really. I like looking out the window and eating the pretzel packet. Me, and Southwest gives you a little stir with your drink that's shaped like a heart, but that's it. We haven't done it together before though, so I think it'd be fun. I wanna see how you react to it. Me too. I wanna to see your face when they give you the heart shake stir thing. We should each ask for a different free beverage and share so I get to try two drinks instead of just one. <laughs> Imagining it makes Min's heart feel like it's gonna explode. Aw. Forgetting her surroundings, Min surges forward to kiss her just as Dia does the same, causing their mouths to crash together unexpectedly hard. Oh. Ah. Sorry, got too excited. That was the worst kiss ever. Let's redo it. Wait. Won't people see us? Oops, I forgot. Maybe we should lie down in the grass? Not my phone going off. Oh, huh? Why? That way, it'll look like we're just wrestling. Ah! Dia lies down and Min gets on top of her and starts making out with her. It doesn't look anything like wrestling. Ah! Oh! Dia clutches at Min's back as Min presses a kiss after kiss to her lips. You're so cute, do you know that? Maybe a little. Aw, Dia goes still underneath her, suddenly looking uncomfortable. What's wrong? A bug crawled under my shirt. Dia sits up and unsuccessfully gropes around under her hoodie for the bug. Ooh, every neuron in men's brain misfires as Dia hikes her hoodie all the way up over her bra, exposing her bare torso. Oh, I'm looking respectfully. I'm looking respectfully. Don't know where it went. Min is so distracted that it takes her a few seconds to notice the bug crawling on Dia's chest. Oh, it's just a beetle, I got it. She grabs a hold of it, just as Akarsha and Noel come jogging up to them. Everyone has arrived, we should get in costume now. Dia frantically pulls her hoodie back on. Uh, <laughs> whoa. I was just helping her, a bug crawled up her shirt. Where was it gonna crawl next, down her pants? What the F, that's not what was happening. Look, the bug's right there. Min raises her hand to show it to him, but it's gone. It must have flown off. 
I mean, I'm not judging. If I had a ticket to Boob City, I know what I'd be doing too. But literally here in broad daylight, really? Ugh, we literally weren't doing anything. Dia's face is still flush pink as they walk over to the others hand in hand. Hey, was she making you uncomfortable? I can make her stop. No, it's okay. Thanks for asking. I feel pampered with you. Good, because you deserve to be pampered. The group gathers around Sakura and Yuki as they haul a pile of clothes and props out of a duffel bag. Sorry, we're late. I was turning my closet upside down trying to find everything. Any objections if I play music from my phone? Are you gonna play anime openings? Maybe. Then yes. How about K-pop? I just discovered this amazing group called Super Junior. I don't know what that is. You can play one song. Yes! She plays a song from her phone speakers and tries to untangle a Nerf gun from a coat belt. Jeez. Okay, they sing it. Period. Oh, this isn't too bad. Isn't it great? Korean guys are so much better than the American guys. How so? They're all so beautiful and kind-hearted, not smelly pervs like the guys here. I need to find myself an oppa. This is weird. Should I say something? I guess she doesn't mean any harm by it. She's trying to appreciate the culture. Here, men, this trench coat's yours. It's my brother's yoit. I probably said that wrong, sorry, costume. It's supposed to have a hat too, but I think he lost it. Yoite? Oh, that's how you say it. The F is that. From the amazing series, Nabari no U. Duh, I'm saying everything wrong. Wait a minute, is this all anime stuff? I believe the correct term is cosplay. What? Akarsha, I thought you meant normal costumes, like Halloween costumes. You didn't ask, so... Oh, look at Akarsha! She looks so cute. What the F are you wearing? My baby wolf costume. How do I look? Like someone wearing cat ears. Is this really gonna come across as wolf? Yuki, this would have been more convincing if you had fursuits. Fursuits are so expensive, though. I might become a doctor just to be able to afford them someday. Also, you guys don't have to call me Yuki anymore. I realized a few days ago that going by a Japanese name in real life is kind of weird if you're not actually Japanese. Me too, actually. Even if we love anime, it's a bit much. It took you all the way until now to realize that. Well, better late than never, thank God. So what are your names? Grace. Grace? What the? And my real name is Saida. At least that one sounds kind of like Sakura. Akarsha, what does your outfit have to do with you being a wolf? You only need the ears and paws to get the point across. So you're saying I should be naked? Oh, uh, no, I'm not. Oh, Dia holds up her environmentalist costume. Where do I change? I used the restroom over there. It's just the one family room, so you'll have to take turns getting changed. Unless, you know, you want men to get more bugs off you. You freak whore! You're deranged if you think I'm effing her in a park bathroom. One way ticket to Boob City. What? Stop calling my girlfriend Boob City? Why are you so obsessed with that phrase now? I'll go now. In the meantime, men, can you help me pitch this tent? It's going to be the setting of your first scene. Ugh, fine. I can help too, since I don't need to get in costume. Men helps Esther and Noelle carry the box with the tent in it. I don't understand why Akarsha keeps making those crass jokes about you two. It's not as if two girls can actually have sexual relations. What the hell are you talking about? Yes, they can. Are you dense? Humans weren't evolved for that. The anatomy makes it impossible. How is it impossible? You can still use other body parts, like your fingers. Fingers? <laughs> you must be mistaken. Are we really having this conversation right now? No, it's true. I mean, girls love manga as a thing. What? What? Right, girl. Did you think lesbians gave up sex for life? Is she serious? How sheltered is she? Noelle is so shocked that she doesn't speak for a while. Esther wipes sweat off her brow and points at a clearing in the dry grass. That spot over there might look nice on film. Isn't it a bit close to the ravine, though? There's a steep downhill slope right behind it. So, it's not like the tent's gonna teleport backwards after we've nailed it down. Yeah, unless a typhoon blows us over, I think we'll be fine. All right, I see that I'm outnumbered. But don't say I didn't warn you. Whatever, girl. 
Minnie hears wrestling behind her. She turns around and sees Akasha making a leaf pile. <laughs> Wait, is she trying the exploding leaf thing? Akasha, that is not allowed. She's always doing something. As Noelle chases after Akasha, Min and Esther lay out their tent in the spot they picked. She's so freaking anal. She's probably sexually attracted to laws. I bet she loses her mind whenever she sees Jay Walkers. She does. It's like she thinks someone's gonna go, good job, Noelle, you're the best at following the rules, and give her a gold star for it. Min squints in the confusion at the steps to set up the tent. I can't picture the shit. Where does the poles go? <laughs> Me. They crisscross in the middle, see? Here, just hold that end and stick it through the metal ring. I hope they got it. Like magic, the tent pops out into the third dimension. Nice. Holy shit, you're like a camping prodigy. <laughs> I mean, all I did was follow the instructions. Now we just have to drive the stakes into the ground. Men pounds each stake into the dirt with a large stone, enthralled that hitting something is actually constructed for once. <laughs> F yeah! Meanwhile, Esther takes her sketchbook out of her backpack and starts writing in it. What are you doing? Esther stops, looking embarrassed. I'm writing down what you said earlier as inspiration for my web comment, like for character dialogue. I started doing this whenever something interesting happens so I can remember later. Huh? When I say that was interesting. You said I was a camping progity. Oh, I didn't even realize it. I read it as prodigy. Oh my gosh, she said progity? You know, instead of a progity. Oh my God. What's so special about that? They're pretty much the same anyway. I don't know, I just thought it was a neat detail. I probably said everything wrong just now, by the way. Obviously, I'll only use it if you're okay with it though. I mean, sure, I don't really care. What's it for again? A comic? Yep. What, like Garfield? Huh? No, it's nothing like that. It's still a work in progress, but basically it's about a bunch of teenagers who have the power to shift into alternate dimensions. It's kind of sci-fi, I guess. Oh, so like a superhero comic. No, there's no super villains or anything. All their problems come from the way they use their own powers. Like, while you're in the parallel universe, you're gone from your original universe, right? But what if you get tied up with something while there and can't come back? That'd suck ass. I wouldn't get to see Dia or my friends anymore. Exactly, no one from the world you left behind would know why you disappeared and you become a missing person there. I always get so stressed out about that when reading Narnia and time travel stories. I've never heard her talk this much before. She must be really hyped about her webcomic. Anyway, a lot of miscommunication happens between the characters because of issues like that. No offense, but I can't stand stories that revolve around misunderstandings. It's so frustrating when the whole problem is literally just people bad at talking. <laughs> if you hurt someone, it should be on purpose. But those kinds of problems are the most realistic. In real life, people hurt each other by accident all the time. True. Like. How? You know how before our school became 93% Asian and used to have a football team? They died because Asians don't care about football, right? Same as the real baseball team. What? Yeah, no one will go to the games. As a last ditch effort to help them last year, my math teacher offered us two points of extra credit for coming to a football game. So I went to help my grade. But as soon as I got home, my dad yelled at me for going to a game instead of studying. He didn't get that we had the exact same goal, me getting good grades. Wait, what ethnicity are you? Huh? I'm black and Chinese. And your dad's the black one? Uh, yeah, he is. Right, why'd you say it like that? I didn't know black people cared about grades. That's like pretty racist of you to say. Bewildered, Min completely misses the tent stake as she was trying. Bewildered, Min completely misses the tent stake she was trying to hit. Huh? How's it racist? Why would you assume black people don't care about their grades? I didn't mean it as a diss or anything. I don't care about grades either. It's not like I was looking down on them. But, but why even bring my race into it like that? I was just asking a question. Didn't you bring up race first? You were talking about Asians. I'm Asian, so I'm allowed to say that. Sure, whatever. If I knew you'd be so effing sensitive about it, I wouldn't have asked in the first place. Wow. So instead of saying sorry, you're insulting me? Well, why the hell should I apologize? I wasn't even trying to be offensive. It's not like I purposefully called you the N-word or something. Wow, thanks for not calling me the N-word? I'm just saying you're overreacting. There's real racist people out there who hate minorities and you're calling me racist just because I accidentally made one little mistake? It's not just about one little mistake. 
You see weird, ignorant stuff like this all the time. No, I don't. Like what? Like when you randomly told me my hair was flat. What was I even supposed to say to that? Yours too? Get a grit. That's not even real racism. You're seriously trying to explain what racism is to me? A black and Chinese person. Go off, girl. Go off, Esther. Look, I'm a minority too. Us even fighting is so dumb. You being Asian doesn't mean you're not racist. The worst racism I've ever seen was when I went to China. God, you're being so stupid. Esther throws her stake down and storms off. Dumbfounded, Min just stands there with her heart racing a mile a minute. How did it blow up like this? I wasn't even trying to start something. But you did, and you didn't apologize either, which is really sus. Shit, did anyone else hear us fighting? Min nervously looks around, paranoid that her friends heard what happened. It's hard to tell if they did. Min frantically hammers the last stake in place, her stomach churning with a mixture of shame and panic. She hears footsteps behind her and nearly has a heart attack when she turns to see Krista walking over. Oh shit, what if Esther told Krista I'm racist against black people? She's black too. I don't want her to hate me. She might even kick me off the team. Need any help with the tent? I'm good. I guess you could say it's not tent to be. I should be extra careful not to offend her. <laughs> Great joke. Thank you. I feel like not enough people appreciate my puns. Having donned her reporter costume, Noelle returns to place a sleeping bag inside the tent. Min, it's your turn to get changed. Where did Esther go? We're about to start shooting. Can't tell her Esther left because she thinks I'm racist. Uh, she just randomly walked off. What? How come? Who knows? She's so weird. Oh, girl. In the park's restroom, Min quickly changes into her evil hunter get up. I'm gonna be sweating buckets wearing all this in this weather. Thank God they couldn't find a hat or I would have been even worse. Dia perks up when Min rejoins the group. Aw, you look cool. You should get a coat like that for real. Normally this would send Min over the moon, but she feels so sick to her stomach she can't properly appreciate it. Thanks, it's me, your racist girlfriend. Dia definitely wouldn't want to be with me anymore if she found out I was racist. Do I look okay? You look so cute in glasses. Is this a character from something? It does kind of get off nerdy animal lover energy. <laughs> no idea. Esther, I like your hair. Oh, yeah? Thanks. Fun buddies. Fun buddies. They soon begin shooting the first scene in front of some trees. This is the Channel 2 News reporting from Boise, Idaho. Did I say it right? Environmentalists have been in an uproar ever since the Obama administration approved the delisting of gray wolves from the endangered species list. Even replaying the conversation in her mind is getting men worked up again. I can't believe Esther had the nerve to call me racist. When we were in Florida, kids used to call me and my brother and try to beat us up. Why would I be racist when I hate racists more than anyone? It doesn't make sense. I wasn't even trying to insult her. Like, good luck going through life getting offended by every tiny thing you see. Girl, just and just own up to it. Girl, right? Are my standards just totally messed up or something? Men stomps onto a random twig and crushes it into tiny pieces beneath her combat boots. What's wrong? Uh, I'm just having a weird day. Do you think I'm racist? No? How come? You're good to me and curious about other cultures. Why? No reason. Just check in. Okay, we got it. Let's move on to the next shot. Dia goes over to stand in front of the camera. Ma'am, can you introduce yourself? I'm an environmentalist with a degree in wildlife ecology. My research has led me to believe that. Bro, can you speak up a little? After a few takes, they manage to capture a halfway audible clip of Dia talking. They move on to the next scene. Soon, it's time for the evil hunter's interview. Min reviews her lines before getting into place. Okay, I'm set up. Action. Next, I'm interviewing a hunter who's camped out in the Idaho wilderness. Hello there. How do you feel about the removal of gray wolves from the endangered species list? Esther could straight up ruin my whole life if she said something right now. I, uh, yes? Give me a minute, I just woke up. It's the afternoon. The sleeping bag I was sleeping on was full of rocks. Anyway, I feel ecstatic about the delisting. I can't wait to kill tons of wolves. Hold up, cut. You skipped a line. What line? The part about how the delisting removed protections for wolves from hunters. All right. Hello there. How do you feel about the removal of gray wolves from the endangered species list? 
I feel ecstatic. The delistic removed protections for wolves in Idaho and, and sweating profusely, Min tries to focus and remember her line. Ma'am, hello? Don't call me ma'am. Why not? I don't like it. I'm not a woman or something. Are we talking about your character or in real life? Cut, come on, don't break the fourth wall. After Min botches their 10th try, Noelle looks about ready to explode. Are you even trying right now? We're gonna be stuck here all day because of you. Shut up, I'm trying. Why don't we take a little break? It'll probably help us all reset. Yeah, let's go stare at the lake or something. We can hide all our backpacks and stuff in the tent. I guess it can't hurt. Damn, this was a lot. The group trudges over to the lake. Dia sits down with men by the water's edge. All right, this is where we're gonna stop it right now because I've been recording for a little bit and it's gonna be a little bit to edit. But oh my goodness, it's the T. It's the low key, the um, the racism for me. It's the, it's men learning a lot today. But if you learned a lot too, like the video. And if you want more Butterfly Soup to see more drama, make sure you like this video. So have a great day in the name of the Lord. And may God bless you every step.